Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. 608, Monday, May 2nd, 48 degrees, getting to 67 today, raining off and on today. WOBM AM 1160-1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and WOBMAM.com, 732-505-1160. If you want to join the conversation, and the conversation now turns to our friend, Executive Director of Harbor House, John Piskel. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jeremy. How are you? I, I am good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm good. Thank Let you me for having me on. John, thank you for coming on. For my first question always for my 6 a.m. guest is, is this like an ungodly hour for you? A little bit. Not yeah. too bad, but <laughs> just a little bit. Of course, you're still you're still at home in your footy pajamas, aren't you? So you're okay. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> All right, good. So, John, why don't you tell folks a little bit, uh, give them an overview of what Harbor House is all about here. Well, Harbor House is has four distinct programs. Our two principal programs is our youth shelter um, that we operate on Windsor Avenue. And um, that is mostly a 24-hour emergency temporary housing situation for um, teens uh, ages 10 to 19 uh, who are displaced or either brought to us by the police um, or referred by the schools uh, in the area. And uh, we provide emergency shelter with our goal of reunifying them with their families. Um, the other principal program we have is our transitional living program, which is on Conifer Street, and that assists, assists uh, young adults between the ages of 16 and 21, a little older uh, group of kids, and we prepare them uh, for self-sufficiency. These are kids who are aging out of um, foster care, aging out of the system. And statistics show that a lot of the kids that age out of the program go homeless. And we provide, you know, as the program says, a transitional living program. And the kids can live there for up to 18 uh, months. Okay. And and so how many kids, because again, I, you know, whenever we have folks on from the nonprofit community, especially um, uh, with nonprofits that deal with folks in crisis, you know, how many kids are we dealing with, um, do you think, in, in the Ocean County area that are in need of you or that are serviced by you uh, on, on some level? It's, it's thousands of kids in a year. I would say 1,400 was our last uh, data count. Uh, the transitional living programs, uh, the places where kids come to stay, uh, we have 12 beds facility uh, for the shelter and a 12 beds facility for the transitional living program. We also operate a family crisis intervention unit, which we try to get to kids and families before it becomes a crisis. Uh, before it escalates, before it comes to a youth either running away or being displaced. And then we have our street outreach program where, we again, we try to – this is our best attempt at preventative measures to address kids um, out on the street and in the community and where kids congregate. So over the course of a year, we touch – uh, over a thousand, uh, over a thousand kids in the greater Ocean County area. Right now, when you say uh, when you say um, kids that are displaced, right? So, so let me understand that. So, so this is these are kids that don't have parents that are with them, or what does that mean? Well, there are uh, numerous reasons why. Kids become homeless. Youth become homeless. Not, none of them do it by choice. Um, this, this primarily, uh, the data shows that there's either economic hard, hardship in the family with a, where the family can no longer afford to live in a home. Um, there, there's a predominance of physical or sexual abuse where either the parent is 
um, physically or sexually abusing the child, or the parent is experimenting with substance abuse um, or mental uh, or has a level of mental Ill- illness, um, and and or there's you know some sort of family upheaval at the shelter, for example. You know, we have situations where a grandmother might be raising, might be the primary caretaker of a child. And that grandmother might come, become so overwhelmed or she might encounter some health issues and she's no longer able to care for the child. And the emergency shelter, and we might have uh, that youth for a period of a week or a month. It's a very short-term thing. So anytime there's some sort of family upheaval, um, anything you can associate with um, a living situation, or whether it be a foreclosure, an eviction, um, someone losing their job and unable to afford where they're living, um, we provide temporary emergency shelter for the youth uh, when a parent is no longer able to take care of them. Right. Um, and so, okay, so John, how did you get involved here at Harbor House? I mean, what, how long have you been at Harbor House? What did you do before? What, how, did your, how did your path lead you here? Well, I started, uh, like most people, I, I took a job in New York City, and I was working for AT&T, and I was traveling uh, actually all over the world. Um, and uh, I remember saying to somebody, and this, this was uh, – in my in my 20s and 30s, and I remember saying to somebody, um, "Geez, you know, I don't know how long, how much longer I can do this. You know, I want my life to have some meaning and purpose." And uh, someone said, "Well, wait a couple of weeks, and that'll wear off." And uh, it didn't. And uh, I went out to Los Angeles and started tutoring and working with kids in the inner city of South Central Los Angeles. Um, and I couldn't believe how resilient the kids were. And I started schools and uh, programs, and it was so rewarding. I'd never worked so hard in my life. Um, and then I came back to New Jersey and uh, got this job at Harbor House. I've been there a year and a half, almost exactly one year and a half. Um, and it's been very rewarding uh, to learn about a community that I grew up in and to learn about how generous and um, uh, resourceful this, this, this community is uh, in taking care of the children of its community. So wait a second. Let me get this straight. You had a job in New York City, right, in the private sector, right? Yes, yes. Uh, can I ask what kind of what, – what were you – like what kind of career was this? I was uh, – Head of a sales team okay. uh, that dealt with, with that, that dealt with AT and T's. Uh, we call them the Fortune 100. Gotcha. Uh, the very multi international com- company. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so you're doing this. You're doing this high powered sales gig, right in New York City. And one day you're like, wait a second, my I, I, I want to be doing something that has an impact on the world. And so you t- you pick up your stuff and you head out to South Central. Yeah. Like like straight out of Compton, South Central. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're we're gonna have to put the pause button on this because we have a break. But I have so many questions that spring up from here. Okay. So okay. Uh, so John Piskel, uh, executive director, Harbor House. Okay. Uh, we we have to find out uh, what 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 changed for John that he said I have to go and make a difference like he is every day. Back after this, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get more Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin at our website, WOBMAM.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Get up, get out, do something. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin continues. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310 and WOBMAM.com. All right, we're back with John Pisco, Harbor House. And I'm, I'm trying to listen. We're on the couch with John Piskel right now. So, John, you 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 go to Boston College, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Graduate Boston College, right? Then you end up getting your MBA from uh, from NYU, right? 
Yes. And now you're working in the city, and you're like, okay, I'm you're you're in, you're in you're in the jungle. You're in corporate America. You're doing your thing, and you say, well, what is your what is what what is the reaction of your friends and family when you say I'm going to L.A. and I'm going to go make a difference? Uh, I think a lot of my friends said, just wait a couple of weeks, and this will wear right. off. And I think. Uh, I think I, I, I recall a specific moment. Uh, we had some uh, business people in from uh, London, and we were at a restaurant in Manhattan. And I remember distinctly a fight breaking out between two of the colleagues about what was a better cut of suit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I said to myself, uh, and it was, this became a very serious uh argument that became almost a physical altercation and i said you know th- this is not for me now i you know i don't want to uh you know there's nothing wrong with working in new york city there's nothing right. wrong with uh but but for me i think it was just just for me it was at that time it didn't seem and i and i thought i'd do it for a year maybe do it for two right, years right. and come back and i think uh i never had a job uh, where my eyes opened in the morning and I couldn't wait to get to work. Huh. And, uh, and then I had friends telling me that they hated me because they envied the job that I had. Uh, because I, you know, it's all about how, how you feel in your job and how you feel about yourself. Right. And, uh, um, and apparently I was giving off quite a glow, um, <laughs> Well, so it still is hard work. So, more importantly, do you remember um, which which cut of suit you felt more strongly about? No. Uh, uh, I think at the at that time, uh, I don't want to date myself. It was the double breasted. Was the oh better. oh, you're dating <laughs> seriously dating yourself? Okay, let's get let's get back to the matter at hand. So, talk to me about uh, Harbor House and the outreach programs. What do you guys do there? Well, the outreach programs is we we try to we have designated staff and des- a designated vehicle where we go out, we coordinate with the local police force, the local uh, social services, and we go to where kids congregate. And we we introduce ourselves in a very non-threatening manner, and we give them pamphlets and resources and say, you know, do you know of a kid? That, are you couch, couch surfing? Or are you... Are you without a place to stay? Are you in need of some services? Are you in need of some help? Because a lot of these, a lot of these kids don't know what they don't know, um, and so we we go. You know, the certain police forces all up and down the Jersey Shore will tell us, "Hey, we'd really like you to go to this area. We'd really like you to go to uh, this camping ground." Because a lot of kids in the in the warmer times will go and stay in uh, parks and stuff. And um, that's where we go. We, t- we try to meet and greet them, and we try to f- get desensitize them to seeing us, um, and then broach subjects like, hey, do you think you need a place to stay? Hey, do you think, you know, how, where, where, where are you at school? Maybe get them to come back and go to school, and, and then refer them to services they may, may need, especially if they're uh, experimenting with uh, drugs and alcohol. Um, so that's our street outreach, but we're expanding it to 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 create better partnerships with the sheriff's department, with the local police forces, with the court, with the court systems, um, with with the schools. I think it's it's so right. key to get kids early. Sure. Okay, uh, John. I know time flies here, but w- when we come back, uh, I'd like you to talk to me about a couple of your events that are upcoming. Um, okay. I'd like you to talk to me about how people can uh, do more, and I'd also like to know what you're going to do with your magic wand to make a difference. Most yes, importantly, I, I see that on May 12th you have Ladies' Night Out with the Moms Club of Middletown South. Is it true or is that a rumor that Donald Trump was going to be hosting that particular <laughs> event? Just a rumor, huh? That- I'm not, just a rumor. I'm All not right, cool. The speculation. John Piskel, Executive Director, Harbor House. We're going to be right back with him after this.
The News is next. Live from the WOBM Newsroom, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. It's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Uh, it is up uh, the 634. <laughs> Struggle there. Big clock in front of me. Uh, Monday, May 2nd, 48 degrees, head up to 67 and rainy. WOBMAM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pop app and WOBMAM.com. 732 505 1160. John Piskel, Executive Director of Harbor House, on the phone with us. So, John, uh, why don't you tell us uh, some of the events that are coming up, some of the, th- some of the things that are, uh, that are on your radar screen? Yes, on May 22nd at the Blue Claws uh, Stadium for a 1.05 p.m. game Sunday uh, in cooperation with the Ocean County Commission on Children's Safety. We're having a kids' day. Kids eat for free, uh, 12 and under. And with the Sheriff's Department, we are going to be giving out uh, fingerprinting kids and taking pictures for uh, children's IDs. Uh, that's May 22nd, Sunday, 105 at the Blue Claws game. Uh, at the end of June, June 22nd, we're doing our 400-mile five-day bike ride. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I will be riding this year. <laughs> I, I hope that I'll be able to continue to be executive director after this ride uh yeah what does your uh, succession planning look like i mean is there is there we, we set something up I, I got a long-term disability uh policy i got a life insurance policy yeah good make sure the family's taken care of yeah but we're uh we're that's our one of our biggest fundraisers and um uh, you asked about what the community can do you know i get a lot of calls about uh volunteers uh but because we're so heavily regulated we have all of our volunteers have to go through a background check and fingerprinting, and then they have to be supervised. So I kind of tend to shy away from volunteers and more so focusing on (laughs) donations. If you find yourself at Target, if you find yourself at Walmart, if you find yourself uh, anywhere, Wawa, and you see those gift cards, you know, $10, $15, uh, the average gift, at Harbor House, um, from from c- the, the larger community, is between twenty five and fifty dollars, and that's really the backbone of our entire organization. Right. Um, we love our twenty five and fifty dollar donors. We love them. We need them, and uh, uh, we need more of them. So that's my message. Yeah, suddenly, suddenly you you went all Bernie Sanders on us there. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's our target. All right. Now listen. Just to, just if you could get twenty seven dollar donations from everybody in the world, uh, we would we would go a long way to uh, to uh, to helping our uh, helping our children, uh, our youth here, certainly in Ocean County. Uh, okay, uh, John. We are going to hand you the um, the magic wand. So uh, what are you doing with it? How are you making a difference? Um, boy, you know, that's a tough one. I, I knew that was coming, and it's, it's still very tough. I think, I think one of the things I, I want to piggyback on what you're promoting at, at WOBM about chasing the dragon, the FBI of New Jersey coming, and talking to youth about the uh, perils of heroin. I think if I had a magic wand, it would be to eradicate heroin and opiate addictions it, it it's running uh a path of destruction through this state uh and through this country and the impact it's having in our program you know we're getting we're getting youth whose parents have been arrested and are incarcerated uh or whose addiction is so bad they can't care for their own children and it's it knows no demographic. It knows no uh, economic factors. Um, it's it's just a very, uh, very, very terrible, tragic um, situation that's going on in this state uh, right. and Ocean County in particular. Right. 
Well, it's amazing, you know, and, and I think – I think I'm amazed every time I talk to somebody who is uh, serving the nonprofit community here in Ocean County because, you know, I, I, I don't think a lot of us uh, realize the again, the that that, that we have. Uh, well, sir, I think the drug problem is becoming more and more apparent. Uh, clearly, you'd have to be living under a rock to not know we have a heroin issue. But but to understand that we have an issue with um, with with kids uh, not having not having homes uh, with kids, not having a place to turn. Uh, when you say that you service over 1,400 kids last year, uh, that's that's a that's an insane number, right? And and when we talk about the uh, the 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 poverty, the homelessness, the drug addiction, uh, the issues that we have, it is so important for us to kind of band together and and start to stamp out some of these issues uh, so that uh, we can we can you know really enjoy the quality of life that we have in the fantastic community here of Ocean County. I couldn't have said it any better. Thank you, Jim. Uh, you absolutely could have said it better. Uh, I'm sure you would have said it better. Uh, and you certainly would dominate me in any conversation about cuts of suits. There is no doubt about that. Uh, Three John, button, two button. I'm telling you, I'm just happy if any button buttons. That's all I'm happy about. Uh, John, why don't you tell folks where they could learn more about Harbor House uh, and, and, and where they can go if they have those $27 uh, donations to make? Well, you can you can go to our website at www.oceans, o c e a n s harborhouse dot org. Um, our administrative office is located behind the Wawa. Everything's proximity to a Wawa yeah. in uh, Times River. Um, behind the Wawa at the corner of Hooper Avenue and Thirty Seven, where our administrative office is directly behind the Wawa on Conifer Street. Um, uh, 808 Conifer Street and in Ocean County, Tom's River. And um, that's where you can go. You can go to our website. And um, um, every little bit counts. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, one other thing I wanted to make the town aware of, uh, with the support of our school systems, of the 24 beds that we have, uh, 12 at the shelter and 12 at the transitional living, um, we're just over 50% of our kids attend the public schools in this community. And just think about that. Every day, uh, more than 11 kids get up every morning and, and we get them to school and try to provide some level of normalcy for them. Um, and that's a big part of what we do. Right. And just one more quick plug, uh, just so you know, uh, Harbor House is uh, on the Ocean First uh, crowd rise challenge. So if that's easier for you, feel free to go on there and just, uh, just, uh, 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 just help them out it, under supporting homeless youth in New Jersey. Uh, that's also a great way to make a, any donation helps. And, and certainly yeah. when you see uh, our kids on there, there's, there's, there, there's no better cause than that. Yeah. We have a nice video on that, on the ocean first foundation website. Uh, and if you donate, we get points towards, uh, a prize, uh, that's um, rewarded by the Ocean First Foundation. So that would be great. I, I almost forgot about that. Well, I'm going to help you uh, out there. John P- so John Piskel, Executive Director, uh, Harbor House. John, really a fantastic story for both you personally um, and you're doing fantastic work. And we're very fortunate that you made that decision uh, some years ago to leave behind uh, the uh, three martini lunches and instead go make a difference uh, here in Ocean County. Thank you so much, Jeremy. All right. You have a great day. More, you too. More Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin back after this.